Hello, people on the internet watching videos that have to do with cars. Welcome to this. The continuation of my 74 RA21 Toyota Celica build, which will soon house this high compression NA built 2UZ V8. If you missed out in the last video where I started tackling this project, up above my head could possibly be a link to it or also the top 10 sea creatures which make terrible pizza toppings. When I did the standalone ECU on the MR2, I built my harness from scratch with all brand new wires and mapped it out on my dry erase board, which is now my wiring schematic for the car. While that works great because you get brand new wiring, the downside is you won't be able to use factory wiring schematics anymore because the wire color is going to be different. So this is a clean, deloomed harness. All of this nonsense is removed, which is necessary so I can make the wire harness fit the engine bay of the RA21 Celica, which is considerably different, obviously, than a 2005 Toyota Tundra. The entire harness has been gone through, deloomed, cleaned, and inspected for any damaged wires. I found two that I just gotta repair. Slight issue though, the harness in this Tupperware is actually the original harness off of my dad's truck and to that engine. This harness came from a 2004 Tundra with a 2UZ V8. Where is the engine behind my butt, my dad's engine, and his truck is a 2005. Which is strange because the junkyard engine had VVTI, so it might have been a late 04, early 05. For the most part, the harnesses are almost identical. There's just minor differences in the coloration of the wires going to each one of the igniters. Really doesn't matter because I'm not using the stock Tundra ECU. I'm essentially just doing this so I have factory Toyota plugs and factory Toyota wiring. This right here is all the wiring there was to the 18R that came out of this car. It's a super tiny harness, but it comes out of the firewall on the opposite side as the Tundra. And now for a 2UZ status update. So I got my brand new genuine Toyota valve covers. Sir Angel Food Cake retrieved them from Toyota dealer. Problem is, it came without the baffle. And I can't swap it over because these pegs are pressed in and it has the pegs already pressed in so far that there's not enough meat to get the baffle on. So I'd have to drill all these out and then repress new pegs in there, which defeats the purpose of me buying the new valve cover to save time. Additionally, Toyota kept using the 4.7 liter past my dad's truck. So they added little bosses right here for an engine cover and some structural ribbing, which my dad's valve cover does not have that. So I'm gonna have all these ugly little bosses on here that aren't used. And these things were $700. So I guess I'm gonna return them because that's no bueno. This is by no means a time saver and it doesn't nearly look as good with all these useless little pegs that are not gonna be used. The quality of a 1974 Toyota harness is astonishing. I cannot believe how mint condition this thing is. I mean, it is like brand new underneath that wire jacket and they use like little bits of heat insulation underneath it. There is fiberglass tubes on the area that had to go over the engine. None of this translates on camera. It's 620 in the evening. I started doing this at like nine. So some of this stuff is going to be retained. I am going to use some of this stuff with the new engine. When I'm still wiring up a car, I like to break the engine harness down into two main groups. There is the group that has to do with the functionality of getting the engine to run and operate with the ECU. And then there is the group that has to do with the instruments and gauges on the dash so that way you can know what's happening as that engine is running. Currently, the engine harness from the 2UZ has both of those groups included into it. And this adorable little engine harness is essentially just all stuff for gauges and meters from the Celica since it was carbureted, it didn't have an ECU. That's where this is going to come in clutch. Wire harness color codes, there we go. 90% of this is for the lights on the front of the car. However, there's some stuff in here that is not. I said this thing didn't have an ECU, but I wasn't technically correct. Number six is computer. So it did have some form of a computer for something. Snip. This bundle over here goes to the air conditioning, which I'm gonna try to retain on this car. Even though I have a wiring diagram in the book, it makes it way easier for quick reference to just go ahead and label stuff. Something that's gonna be tricky is if I want my factory indicators and dummy lights in the dash to still function as original, I'm gonna have to use sensors from the 18R 
on the 2UZ. There we go right there, number seven and 17. Thermo sensor and distributor, those are the grounds. What's gonna be a pain is my AC compressor is gonna be on this side on the UZ. All of this stuff so far, keep. This stuff over here starting to shape up to be 18R specific, like this guy. Not saying I'm getting rid of it, just saying technology's changed in 50 years. It's super hard to undo this from the harness when it has common wires shared with other circuits. I found a Toyota factory service wire manual for a 75. It's pretty close to this one. And uh, it's coming in a lot more handy than that Hanes book. Green, orange, right here, neutral safety switch. What is this doing up here in the engine bay? Yellow, green, water temp sender. Makes sense why this was insulated since it went on the engine. Celica harness complete. I now know exactly what every single wire does and what it's for. Surprisingly enough, there's only about five to seven wires that I can see that I'm gonna be able to just completely delete. Everything else is necessary. Just when I thought I had stripped enough, I need to make this harness completely naked. If you're part of the population watching this right now that thinks electrical wiring is an absolute nightmare and that this should be punishment for people who stick LSs in vehicles that are not made by General Motors, then let me tell you that wiring is really not that bad. I just triggered somebody in this comments. Chill, it's it's okay. I understand why you use the LS. They're affordable and they make great power. Anyway, wiring's not that bad. You just have to be extremely organized and break things down circuit by circuit. Labeling everything makes it a ton easier, especially if you are going to be modifying the harness and removing circuits from it that are no longer required. Just take it step by step piece by piece, and I promise you, it is not that scary of a task. It's now day number three, and after like 16 hours straight of doing nothing but wiring, I need an intermission. This is not a steering wheel, and as you could imagine, it's extremely difficult to move this thing around the shop with just the nubbin. This, however, is not an RA chassis steering or front suspension. Quarter glass, that's not steering column. Water pump timing cover out to the UZ. There's this front grill. This is how I spend half of my day that you guys never see, is looking for parts. This might have some stuff. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> self explanatory yeah, I can put that in. Clamshell, other half of clamshell. Steering column, there we go. Some, somehow, somehow. Instructions. Time to play a game of what bolt went where. These are skinnier. Ha, ah, that's why there's only three. These are for the steering column, because there is only three. I'm so happy past me knew that I would be looking for that screw and I stuck it right behind there. That way I wouldn't mix it up with the other screws. We all know this was bound to happen. I can't just put this thing back together without at least wiping it down. Even though I'm gonna detail the crap out of this and the car's done. There are possible odds that I might end up having to dismantle this again because wiring, but I'll take those chances. I got so lucky that this car had this period correct Momo steering wheel in it already. This has to drop down onto that shaft down there. You can see that goes exactly where the header is gonna have to run. So that's gonna that's gonna be a little tricky. All right, that's a little conservative in case I have to grind away a little bit. Check this out. Surprise paper. Hopefully this is a measure once, cut twice, and not a cut once, reorder twice. The saw is next door and I didn't really move my camera. It's cut though. That's gonna work perfect. The uh, downside though, I have to undo the steering column or the steering rack. There's no way I would have known how to cut it had I not assembled the steering column fully. I'm gonna keep telling myself that. Right. Ah, I'm threading. Ah, look at that. No more Bluetooth steering. I can actually turn the wheels in this thing. There's only one entry point in the firewall for this to fit through, but luckily the Celica is like half the size of a Tundra. I don't know how many wires I could fit through that. That's pretty small. But then again, it's not much smaller than the one that the original harness went through. 
So I don't know. I can either mount the ECU behind this kick panel or I can tuck it up under the dash, under the carpet maybe. I have the thing for the air conditioning right here, so that's kind of in the way. I think this is just for air conditioning right here. If you ever find yourself doing a job like this and you're trying to figure out what plug goes to what sensor or junction on the vehicle, you go into your wire diagram, and by the way, my junkyard engine is a 05 Sequoia. That's why some of the wiring looked a little bit different. So at least they're both 05s, Tundra, Sequoia, almost identical. There is a section at the back of the book called the K connector list that literally has every single plug on the entire vehicle. This is obviously Toyota specific, but I have seen other manufacturers do something kind of similar. So start with this blue one, cause that's easy. Typically the first letter in the code for the plug has to do with what its component is. So this is the engine computer. So E is for all the, all the ECU plugs. It also has a Toyota factory part number right next to it in case you need to order a new plug. So if you look at E7, you notice how it's got the larger wires at the top and these weird little blocks down at the bottom. Well, that is exactly how the physical plug looks. And you can see compared to all the others, it's just slightly different so you don't mix them up. This one right here, I'm having a lot of trouble trying to find just by scrolling at pictures. But thankfully, stamped on the back side right here is the last five digits of the part number, which I can hit control find and there are only four plugs that are similar. So I just gotta check those out, J21, J43 and J52. And typically on most vehicles, J is the start of a junction plug. So there it is, blue, J52. Junction connector for the automatic transmission, the park neutral safety switch. This is definitely something that I'm gonna be able to delete from this harness because I don't have an automatic anymore. There are four days in this video, which means I am horribly falling behind. Oh, I gotta give this thing an alignment. I can barely even push it. This was dirty. Can't have that. And hurt my ears. I have a lot of other stuff to do on this car other than just wiring. That scared me. That was <laughs> the light in the ceiling. And uh, I, I need to break up the monotony of the wiring because it's a bit much. I labeled this self-explanatory because future me would get it. Ow, I was my like shoulder. A tech tip that I'm teaching myself at the same time as you, don't go cheap on Ziploc bags if you're gonna store hardware in them long term because screws are pointy. Perfect. Well, that's perfect. When you're aligning the door, you wanna make sure the door is flush or just a hair further out than the rear quarter panel. That way you don't get rock chips all along this leading edge. Body lines are lined up perfect. Oh, passenger side. Genuine Toyota parts. You may have seen me install this on the driver's side in a different video, but this right side wasn't gonna install itself magically after the camera turned off, so it has to happen. Fresh and clean. Doing all these little things is satisfying because it's making it feel less like a pile of parts and more like an actual car. Oh, I gotta adjust that one. If I remember correctly, I also have to adjust the hinges on this side. I think the hinges are a little off. What you don't know is I edited myself adjusting this door latch two or three times for the video, but in all actuality, I did this about 20. That's pretty good right there. Honestly, to get this thing perfect, what I need to do is widen the gap at the front by about one to maybe two millimeter and bring it back a hair and that will be absolutely perfect. You can see that's how the driver's side is. The gaps are almost identical between front and rear. Well, that's gross under there. No wonder this thing smelled like old. If you have ever gone inside the attic of an old New England home built in the 1800s, that is 100% what it smells like. This is not, it's not good. You know how many farts and cigars and burps and whatever disgusting smells are absorbed into that? The same thing with the rear fiber board behind the gas tank here. There's one clip. That I kind of want to replace with metal since this is actually like a firewall. Oh, it does have a, a little Y brace behind it. Good, I was gonna add one of these. That's why I wanted to take it off. Oh, it's like petrified. Oh, I got it. 
Oh, it's, cool. <laughs> it's gross. I won't complain about wiring anymore. I'll gladly go back to doing that. Oh, jeez. Whilst I'm in the business of doing things that are disgusting, might as well grab this one. This one doesn't smell like dry dust. This one just smells like old grass. There we go. That's nasty. That's the last of it. You're probably asking yourself, why would I do this in a video that I did on wiring? And there's a logical explanation for that because speakers, speaker wiring. I have to run fresh speaker wiring throughout the inside of the car whilst I'm tackling all this and killing two chickens with one rock. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell because it is 49 years old, but it seems like they just painted the fiberboard with a brown paint to match the interior. And that's really sun faded and bleached. I'd like to wrap this with a piece of leather that matches the fabric. So with that said, it's kind of a prelude into the next video. Which here's the thing. Obviously I got a lot of work to do on this, but my Forester has been sitting in a storage unit for a year now. And I haven't driven it once. And it's getting severely neglected and I kind of want to do a video on it because I do have a lot of parts on that shelf from Japan for the Forester that I still never put on. Besides, I don't even have an ECU for this thing, so I can only go so far with the wiring. I don't have headers, so I can't put the engine in yet, and I also have to wait on parts for the new engine as well. So I could do another video on this, but I kind of want to do something with the Gump. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching. I will see you soon with maybe a live stream. Let me know if you want to see a live stream soon also. Okay, bye.